What a great spot, but it was time to move on. After our staple travel breakfast, we packed up and left camp by around 8.30. Rolled into Mount Isa with a defined agenda. Groceries, check. Fuel, check. Bunnings, check. And we were soon on our way. Camarool Caves are an extensive system of caverns beneath the Barclay Tableland. And during the Carbrine times, approximately 550 million years ago, shallow seas deposited the flat beds of dolomite that make up the tableland. Over time, water percolating through the fractures and bedding planes in the dolomite dissolved the rock and created a series of large twisting caves connected by vertical shafts, some up to 75 metres long. Portions of the cave's roofs have now collapsed, forming sinkholes on the surface. Amazing, isn't it? I don't think this one's as deep. See the bottom? So what are we, about two and a bit hours out of Mount Isa and we've decided to sort of make camp somewhere near Camelwheel. Um, given that we're not in that big a hurry, what we've done, we've turned off and come into the Camelwheel Caves. But as you can see, there's a couple of dirty big holes in the ground that they've found. Um, interesting, the rock formations. It's almost like, um, yeah, honeycomb. You can see where there's like air bubbles have been in the rock, and it's almost like it's petrified. So I probably need a little bit more digging around to see what I can find out about that. 
but no, that's quite cool. We're not a cloud in the sky. Bloody beautiful day out here at the moment. So we'll uh, make our way back to the car and then head through to uh, there's a water hole we want to go and have a look at, it. and then we'll find somewhere to camp for tonight. Now in a water hole, I guess traditionally it would always be a place where we meet. What better place to meet up with people but at a water hole? That always seems to be the case. Oh man, what a day. This spot is epic. We are so blessed. We are adorned in the burnt orange glow as the sun sets in the west. We just stare into Venus's belt to the east and with a glass of wine in hand, we thank the million stars we'll see tonight that we live in this amazing place. Today we head for a new spot, somewhere we've never been before and always wanted to visit. But first, we need to cross the Northern Territory border. About to leave, already back in. Come with me, I'm not really asking. Get away. We have uh, just crossed over the border to Northern Territory. We thought we might have had to stop and show our pass, but there was nobody there. So we'll just continue on. Life with no distractions, we'll get away. This is what we waited for. Oh. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow. We can't miss out. Oh. I'm done living life with the lights out. After the border, the next stop was the Barclay Homestead. It is the first and only stop for travellers crossing the border into the Northern Territory on the Barclay Highway. This is about the halfway point between Camelwheel and Queensland and Tennant Creek in the Northern Territory and provides a welcome relief for the overall journey of over 460 kilometres between the towns. We made the most of it and turned it into our morning tea stop and we were soon on our way again. Thankfully, we didn't need fuel as there was a few unhappy people in the shop. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow. We can't miss out. I'm done living life with the lights out.
so we arrived at around 1.30. As we knew this place would be busy, and we really did want to spend the night. We get ourselves set up, and then grab a bite to eat. The day was a bit warm, so the decision was made to chill for a while before exploring some of the walks on offer. This place is epic. As we wander through the enormous round boulders, it's not hard to work out where it got its name. Spectacular in every way. The area of rocks is an important meeting place and rich in dreaming sites for local Aboriginal people. We completed a couple of the walks, then took in the sunset from Nanjinka Lookout. Oh, I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Nanjinka meaning to look around. On our return on dark, we need not be concerned. Whilst the place was busy, there was still plenty of room. Liz awakes to see the sunrise from her bed. We packed up and made our way to the day use area where we make the most of the soft morning light to take some photos of Shiloh with the marbles as a backdrop. We sneak up the highway refuelling at Tenner Creek and making Rena Springs for lunch which is located some 160 kilometres north of Tenner Creek. Rena Springs is usually regarded as the border between the tropical top end and the temperate red centre regions. And like so many places along the Stewart Highway, it owes its origins to the Australian Overland Telegraph Line. It was named after Dr Frederick Rena, who was dispensing medical advice to the team working on the Telegraph Line when they passed through the springs in 1872. The next stop was at Feud Ponds Overland Telegraph Line Memorial Reserve, located approximately 35 kilometres south of Dunmurra. This heritage listed attraction is located near the intersection of the Stewart and the Carpentaria Highways. Well, here we are, this is um, the joining point of the Overland Telegraph. How about that? On my bloody birthday! They did it on the 22nd of August! Important link in the chain, absolutely. So 3,178 kilometres of Overland Telegraph Line completed the first communication link between Australia and Europe. The line from Adelaide was connected to an undersea cable from Darwin to Java in Indonesia. Wow. And it's good, some of the stuff's still here, which is brilliant. Look, Liz. They joined it up. Monumental day. <laughs> the project was under the direction of Sir Charles Todd, the Superintendent of Posts and Telegraphs. Communication between Australia and the rest of the world could now happen in hours rather than weeks. Okay, we're back on the road and our destination was Daily Waters. Liz tried to call and make a booking, but they don't take bookings, they just said they fit everyone in, and that they do. So we had a meal at the pub that night and enjoyed the local entertainment. We filled our water tanks and gave the car a good look over because tomorrow was the start of our new adventure, travelling to destinations that we'd not been to before. And that's always exciting. Are there any other rangers in the audience? 
minutes while we're waiting, tuning, Phil's tuning again of course. Any redheads? Any former redheads? This board is a tribute to Noel Bunting. Who is he, you might ask? Well, he had a vision. A vision of an efficient, reliable system for the transportation of cattle from remote stations to market. He was instrumental in the process of legalising the use of triples, that is, three trailers on road trains, and he also played an important role in the development of the Beef Roads program that many of us will travel on in outback Queensland and the Northern Territory. He made a path yesterday that many will follow today. After that short stop, we were soon on our way. Well, I reckon that's pretty ironic. 
We had just finished finding out about Mr Bunteen and driven a kilometre down the road and the first vehicle we come across is a three trailer road train. My only concern at this stage was the edge of the road was covered in dry grass and extremely dry at that. The risk of starting a fire was real. The guy in the truck actually called us through to a spot that was safe to pull off to the side. Roaming stock is always a possibility out here, so you should always keep your eye out. They are generally well behaved and used to the traffic, but you should never trust them. So we've just left Top Springs on the Buchanan Highway. Yes. And uh, Highway. this is what we've uh, experienced. The first part of it from um, the Stewart Highway to Top Springs actually wasn't too bad. It was quite, it uh, looked like it hadn't long been graded and it was like 90, nicely comfortable 90 k. But this is um, supposedly the highway, but it's more like the driveway up to a farm shed. But there's 200 k's of it, so <laughs> this, will be, this could be an interesting afternoon. But when we look out around and about, it's a beautiful country, beautiful country. So we'll probably go, probably end up driving on the edge of properties like we've done with the other part of it yeah no it's it's uh quite quite different not quite what i expected i expected to sort of get out of town and be back on a road similar to what we've been on but this is uh, one way or one lane with some fairly tall grass off to the side so they, they obviously look after it because where there are creek crossings where there's chances of road damage with floods They've put culverts and bitumen and things in, but the rest of it, well, we'll wait and see. Here he comes, we've got oncoming traffic now. She's broke. So, um, that was Coolabar Creek crossing. Coolabar Creek, Creek we've just done. And uh, we had just passed the car coming the other way, so it was pretty convenient because it was nice and wide there. But this is a bit more like it. That first little bit was just a track, grown, overgrown in the middle of the crown, but it goes back to it up here. So anyway, we, it is what it is, and um, so we got, yeah, as I said, about 200 k's of this, and then we'll uh, decide where we're going to stay the night. Hopefully Jasper Gorge, but we'll see. Yeah. Don't know, never been here before, so I don't know what it's um, likely to be. So this is all new. Cheers. Which all right. is what we like doing. Which is what we want to do. One stop. Oh, thanks, Liz. Tuna and biscuits. Um, cheese stick and small tomatoes. Yum. Just a nice, easy, light lunch. It takes you 10 minutes to have it, pack up, and be back on the road again. And given you know you're just driving, so you're not burning a lot of energy. Got to look after them calories. So. This is sort of typical of a, of a stop, 
Now we're on the Buchanan Highway. Excuse me, I'm just going to have this. Mm -mm -mm. It's, it's bloody awesome. So I've just come across the creek and um, this little river. I'm sure it'll have a name on it. see at that end. Probably have one at the top. There's still quite a bit of water around. So this is um, this is where we've stopped for lunch. What a bloody cracking spot. Sort of down in a bit of a valley, obviously because where the water is. We're out of the wind. It's quite windy up the top. And we stopped earlier. Check we had one of the tie-up monitors decide to stop working and was beeping at me. <clears throat> not just not due to low pressure, just that it stopped sending a signal. So taking it off and it's actually full of a lot of crap. So I've cleaned it. So after lunch we'll see whether that's fixed. But yeah, just nice and easy. Tuna, you get your little selections in the tins. So you can you can mix it up a bit of variety. So that's all. Oh, this is mango. Mango chili leaves, yeah? Yep, mango chili leaves. Mango chili. So mm, 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 mm. You want a coat? No. Oh, I have a fruit box, thanks. And so we're starting to get to the a good part of the country because now there's pandana then uh, pandanus starting to appear on the riverbank. Anyway, that's lunch done. Pack that up and we'll be uh, back on the road again. So this road is fairly ordinary, but that's what we enjoy. So we're averaging around about, um, taking us about eight minutes to do 10 kilometers thereabouts. So sort of averaging around the 60, 70 kilometers an hour. But it's got some big wash, big washouts, um, dips, um, rough sections, all reasonably well marked. But um, yeah, anyway, it is what it is. We decided to come this way. We hadn't been on this road before. Um, and it's, yeah, passing through some great country. Beautiful. traveling all day the shadows were starting to lengthen we could see Jasper Gorge starting to appear on our map so we would make it for tonight well that's what we thought until this happened damn it's shut in the next episode we cook up a feed on the induction cooktop I get the fishing rod out for the first time on the trip. We take a step back in history and bask under a million stars. <laughs>